for round 15 of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. We're at a dry and sunny Spa Francorchamps. It's the third race of what has been a fabulous weekend so far. Two races yesterday, absolute stunners with bags of overtaking, bags of drama right the way through. Well, this race with a grid based on a driver's second best qualifying time and a qualifying session run on a wet road has again produced a pretty jumbled grid. 16 laps or 35 minutes are in prospect and this should be another excellent race. A great way to end a weekend that thus far has seen two wins out of two races for Max Verstappen, the Belgian-born, Belgian domicile Dutchman is very much the man to beat around here. Two wins and a new lap record as you watch the cars make their way to the grid. Jordan King there for 15th lines up. He's had two 10th places so far this weekend. And it's been a difficult weekend, really a legacy of having a punctured tyre for qualifying in the first race and ending up at the back of the grid and having to do some fighting through from there. David Addison trackside. We're looking forward then to the 15th round of the championship headed still by Esteban Ocon, who, shock horror, yesterday in race one had his first non-finish of the season. He was in the middle of a three-car scrap. They were three abreast going up to Le Combe, and he, I'm afraid, got pincered and ended up with broken suspension on just the opening lap of the race, and that put him out. But he still leads the championship, and he is the man who starts this race on pole position. And yes, it is John Bryant Meisner with him at the front of the grid because he was able to uh, use his wets right to the end of the session and get two good laps right at the very end. Felix Sorales will start third, as you see the grid scroll through. Sorales had a very big accident yesterday. Uh, he tangled with Lucas Auer. The stewards, apparently, thought Sorales had a case to answer, but it didn't look like that at the time. But thankfully, West Tech has done a very good job of rebuilding the car, and Felix Sorales, who did have the lap record up until yesterday for Formula 3 around here, starts third on the grid. And as you look at the back, and again, some star names all the way through this order, Antonio Fuoco never got out into the restarted qualifying session because of having been off earlier and doing some damage, so he's at the very back. Dennis van der Laar crashed in free practice and didn't do any of the qualifying sessions, which Gilbert had an engine change as well as an off, and that's put him to the back of the grid. But Esteban Ocon then, on pole position, still the championship leader by some margin. Five race wins have gone his way already this year, and the Frenchman, who drives for Prima Power Team, doesn't like losing, as we discovered at Poe, as we discovered at the Hungara Ring. And given who is around him on the grid, I think it would be a surprise were he not to be on the podium, perhaps were he not to be the winner of this race. But let's see what Verstappen can do, because he will start fifth and is a real fighter around here. John Bryant Meisner, though, having his best grid position in the championship. He was a race winner, albeit with a non-reg engine, in the British Championship at Silverstone last year. He drove in the uh, ATS Formula 3 Cup, as well as in the FIA Championship last year. He was fifth in the ATS Cup, the German series. Uh, came from Formula Renault, in which he raced in both the Swedish and the North European Cup. There is Felix Sorales. Third on the grid, with his Mercedes-engined Dallara, run by Team West Tech. John Miller and Gavin Wills, the men behind the team. Felix, an experienced Formula 3 racer these days. And it's disappointing that he's not had better fortunes yet this year. It looked yesterday that he was going to be on for a good result. But then, as the race wore on, he got muscled down the field and ended up with this very spectacular accident indeed. His best result of the year has only been a sixth place, not yet on the podium, which is a surprise to many. But Sorales round here will be one to watch. And with him on the second row of the grid will be... Felipe Guimaraes, who had a punctured tyre in race two yesterday. He came over the timing line OK, but then as he braked for La Source, down went the tyre, it came off the rim and he had a big, big spin, and that put him out of the race. There is Guimaraes, another driver who has split his time in the last couple of years between this and the British Championship, and uh, Guimaraes, who drives for Double R Racing. Anthony Boyo Hyatt's team is ready to go here at Spa. 35 minutes is the time slot, 16 laps the duration, and it won't be long, I suspect, before this man, Max Verstappen, starts to make progress. He hasn't led to the first corner in each race. Indeed, he's actually lost ground going through La Source, but the way that he attacks early on and gets a good run up Le Combe, where you can get a toe, ideally uh, puts him in a challenging position as they head to the chicane at the end of that straight, the camel straight at the top of Radion into Le Combe. And I suspect that even though he will start fifth on the grid, Verstappen could well be up with Ocon fighting for the race lead by the time they reach their calm on the opening lap. We'll see whether he's able to work his way through the traffic as quickly as I'm anticipating he will. But Verstappen seems to excel around here. 
two wins and a lap record thus far. It has been a very impressive weekend, and he's up to fourth in the championship as well, just 25 points behind Lucas Auer. The Stappen drives for Van Amersfoort Racing. So does this man, Gustavo Menezes, who had his best results of the season on Friday and Saturday. A pole position indeed went his way for race two, and he finished third in that yesterday. Uh, he admittedly made a tiny error early on when leading. He just got himself onto the kerb into Le Com, outbraked himself and ran wide, and that allowed Verstappen and others to jump ahead of him. But Menezes really does go well around here. Van Amersfoort racing new to this championship this year and learning fast. And Menezes, the American, are learning fast as well about European circuits. Seventh on the grid is Tatiana Calderon. That in itself is rather exalted company. She's not normally a seventh place qualifier. But yesterday she had her best ever Formula 3 race and best ever result to finish in fifth position. It was a remarkable effort, and Tatiana Calderon did everything absolutely right. She fought well, she drove cleanly, she withstood pressure, and on the restart after a safety car period, and she was running fifth, the expectation was that she'd get mugged and fall down the field. Not a bit of it. She was able to control her pace, let others squabble behind her, and the round of applause she got from all the teams when she came down the pit lane was not only very heartening to see, but well-deserved as well. So... Tatiana Calderon's confidence is up. Let's see whether there can be another good result out of this race. At eighth on the grid, Michele Beretta, whose best finish of the year, has been a 12th, 22nd in race one, crashed out on the opening lap, tangling with Jules Shimkoviak in race two, so he's somebody else in urgent need of a change of fortune. Michele Beretta for the Euro International team, Antonio Ferrari's squad. And so now, as the Deutsche Post grid girls make their way from the grid, you're looking at the man who is ninth on the grid, and that is Nicholas Latifi, another of the drivers for Prema Power Team. The same squad that runs, for example, the pole man, Esteban Ocon, but because Ocon is a Lotus Formula 1 junior driver, so he runs in that team's colours. This is the traditional uh, tricolor, the Italian tricolor colours carried by the Canadian. Nicholas Latifi for the Italian Prema Power Team, ninth on the grid. His best finish of the season thus far has been a second place, which he took at the start of the season at Silverstone, but Nicholas Latifi has had a pretty barren patch since, and a 13th and a 7th over the weekend illustrate the fact that he's struggled to get himself right onto the ultimate pace. Looking further down on the grid, Antonio Giovanazzi driving for the Collins Dragonia I Am operation. And Felix Rosenqvist, winner at Poe, third in the championship two years ago, second last year, was rather hoping to be able to maintain that one-place gain and be this year's champion. Indeed, many people pre-season tipping him as the man to beat. He's had a really awful start to the year with the Mucca Motorsport run, Dallara Mercedes, and race one, it looked like he was going to be good for the podium, and then he had a fuel pump problem late in the race, having already had it in qualifying, he flipped to the reserve, Lost a bit of time, but managed to get back ahead of Jake Dennis. And then on the last lap of the race, the reserve fuel pump let him down as well. So Rosenqvist's first race was not exactly a happy one. Seventh, he was fourth yesterday, which was better. There is Lucas Auer, his teammate at Mooker Motorsport, 11th on the grid. Auer, who had a win at Hockenheim, going back to the second meeting of the season. And as you look at the grid, ready to go. They will have one warming up lap. We are about three minutes away from that warming up lap getting underway. Everybody runs on Hankook tyres and local time has just gone 10 o'clock here. It's a pretty warm morning. We've had very un -spa like weather Saturday and Sunday. The rain got itself out of the way on Friday afternoon for qualifying. It helped to give us these jumbled grids for races two and three. And the grid's starting now to be clear. Just the last engineers present with the car. Engines will fire up at the one minute mark and then we should be really ready for business. Jules Shimkoviak, who had his best finish of the year in the First race of the Hungara ring starts this one 12th on the grid. He was a casualty yesterday of the contact with Michele Beretta. And Jules Shimkoviak in the third of the Van Amersfoort racing cars will be another man to watch around here. Next on the grid is Hector Hurst for Team West Tech. And Hector went pretty well at the start of yesterday's race, but then he got mugged a little bit and elbowed back down the field. And in the end, his reward was only 17th place, but he had really driven a lot better than that result would suggest. We have now had the signal to fire up engines and so the engineers having done just that make their way off the grid now they have done all they can do unless they are prevailed upon for an emergency pit stop it is now down to the man behind the wheel they've had free practice they've had qualifying in order to get the cars absolutely set up right the drivers had this unpredictable qualifying session uh, which was uh, wet but drying 
and some teams got the best use out of the wet tyres, certainly better than others did. And so with the likes of Antonio Fuoco, Antonio Giovinazzi, Tom Blomquist, Jake Dennis starting near the back, those are the drivers to expect to make progress. And Jake Dennis yesterday uh, was an absolute hero, wasn't he? From 20-something to 11th at the end of lap one, he had a really good run. Antonio Fuoco's fan club, as ever, present and in fine voice, but they're going to have to cheer oh so loud because Fuoco starts 24th on the grid. So we have the cars being released to La Source on this green flag lap. And as the cars work their way down towards Eau Rouge, the circuit bone dry. And an opportunity now for the drivers to explore one of the finest circuits on the calendar. It's a great mix of venues that this championship goes to. For example, they've had uh, current Formula One venues like Silverstone, like Hockenheim, then the street circuit of Po, then they went to the Hangara Ring, this weekend Spa, again like Budapest, another current Formula One venue, and then we get to the Norris Ring street circuit in just a week's time. Another completely different challenge for the teams and for the drivers. This is how the championship looks after yesterday's second race. And in the background, that shot of everybody weaving around is rather akin to how it has been on this part of the circuit up the Kevel Straight, lap after lap after lap. We had four abreast at one point yesterday, and we've had some really spectacular racing. Uh, many people perhaps surprised at just how good Formula 3 can be around here. Hopefully, this third race will live up to the pattern, but everybody involved in the championship has been really pleased with the quality of the racing this weekend. Out of all of it, though, you have to say how good Max Verstappen has been. He's barely put a wheel wrong. In the first race, he was perhaps a little over-defensive in the way that late race he blocked uh, Lucas Auer, a swapped across on him, and there was a little bit of contact between the two. Verstappen, by that point, was suffering from oversteer and lost a lot of pace. The rookie championship, mirroring in some respects the overall, it's being headed by Esteban Ocon. Jake Dennis, his opposition. Antonio Fuoco, then Max Verstappen. And Jake Dennis, although he's not had a win yet, has been very consistent this year for the Racing Steps Foundation, learning well, developing well, and as we saw yesterday, has good racecraft. So this is the grid. Ocon, Brandt Meisner, Sarralis, Guimaraes, Verstappen, Menezes, Calderon, Beretta, Latifi, Rosenqvist. It's a rather unusual looking top 10, but it's a very unusual looking grid. Our is only 11th. Go further back, Jordan King is only 15th, Dennis 17th, Blomqvist 18th, Giovinazzi 19th. All drivers that should make some progress and by right should be higher up the order. The same is true of Antonio Fuoco and a word about Santino Ferrucci who made his race debut in one of these cars yesterday in race one uh, but had a big accident and was eliminated with Giovinazzi. There was enough damage to put him out of race two but the team, Euro International, has worked wonders overnight and got him back into this third race. The 16-year-old making his championship debut as well uh, this weekend, so it's good to have him on the grid. He's done uh, a couple of rounds of the German championship, but that's in an older 08 spec car. These are the 2012 chassis, and therefore it's been a real step up for him this weekend. But Ferrucci actually has acquitted himself well in qualifying, and in that first race, until Giovinazzi arrived on the scene, was looking pretty good. We'll see what he can do in this third race of the weekend. It is round 15 of the championship. The FIA Formula 3 European Championship enjoying a very strong season indeed up and down the pit lane. The engineers gather, they look at the television pictures, they will turn their attention ultimately to the data as soon as people go through sector one and they can start to look at the classification and by the end of the lap get a handle on what their cars and their drivers are doing. As soon as the last car, that of Mitch Gilbert, is in place, you see it in the background now, the Fortec run, Delara Mercedes, as soon as that is in place, there will be a flag shown by the marshal to say that everybody is back from the green flag lap and we are ready to go racing. That flag comes now after a bit of a wait, but everybody is there. And so now the drivers concentrate on the lighting gantry that is there under the circuit of the spa Francorchamps gantry. Five red lights are on when the five lights go out. Now we're racing, and it's a good start by Ocon this time. John Bryant Meisner gets away well. One car bogs down in mid grid, but everybody off the line cleanly. And look at Verstappen go up the inside as they go four wide into La Source. Brilliant move up the inside. Verstappen goes third already. Nobody this year has had three wins in a weekend. Verstappen could do it, given his pace. Just let's see how he climbs up Le Con. He's dropped back a bit from Brian Meisner. But if he can get in the draft, heading up Radion along the Camel Straight, he may well be able to attack. And that would be great to see him take on Ocon for the race lead. 
Hour goes wide over the curve. Calderon is behind. Rosenfist is ahead. John Bright Meisner gets a toe. He comes to the outside of Esteban Ocon as they head towards Lecon for the first time. Verstappen is third. Sorales fourth. Menez is fifth, locking up as they scrabble through Lecon. And look, change for the lead. Bright Meisner goes ahead of Ocon. Verstappen tries to buy into it as well. Gimaraes looks to the inside line as they work now down towards Bruxelles for the first time. John Bright Meisner leads for the first time this year. Ocon is second and three abreast to Bruxelles. Gimaraes under attack. He's got Latifi going one way. He's got the Booker Motorsport trio looking for a way round on the other side. Fantastic racing already. Downhill for the first time. Now, can John Bright Meisner hang on to the race lead? He's going to have to work some in order to do that. Jake Dennis there, you see, trying to attack as they come down through Pouac for the first time. Spike Goddard at the back of that little queue. Also, hunting to try to gain places as to the fifth path they come on the opening lap at 16. Rosenqvist round the outside of Guimarai. She gets on the dirty part of the circuit, scrabbles through the fifth path. And now Lucas Auer and Tatiana Calderon right up with him. Lucas Auer not able to take advantage of that as they swoop through Le Col for the first time. So John Brandt Meisner it is, leading the way. The Swede, having qualified so well, now putting himself up front and ahead of the championship leader, Esteban Ocon. This has all the makings yet again of being an absolutely enthralling race as Jake Dennis battles his way into Blanchimonas for the race lead. Ocon comes round the outside and swoops ahead of Brian Meisner. Here comes Verstappen up the inside. Can he do it? He can't do it there. John Bright Meisner leads into, but not out of the bus stop. Ocon goes back ahead of him. Meantime, look at Motorsports, three orange cars all running together as they come over the line. So, end of that one. Normal service is resumed. Ocon leads the way, but he's having to defend. Brian Meisner runs second, but Stappen is third. Then it's Sorales, Menez is, and look at this. Up the inside, Rosenqvist goes ahead of Guimaraes. Lucas Auer tries to follow him through. To no avail, the Austrian has to stay behind the Brazilian as they come downhill. Jake Dennis gets himself ahead there of Hector Hurst. That's a change for 12th place. Only the top 10 score points. That's the first target for everybody. Up Radion they come. Now, Rosenqvist is ahead of Guimaraes, but Guimaraes fights back. Look, he's in the toe, and look at this for the race lead. Ocon versus Brian Meisner versus Serranis. Verstappen is in the mix as well, and Menezes tries to join in. Verstappen round the outside. Brilliant move. Brilliant. Verstappen leads. Ocon tries to fight back, but he can't do it. Max Verstappen from third to first, heading into Lecom. Now, can he do the triple this weekend? Ocon tries to fight back as they head downhill. Brian Meisner is third, then it's Serralis, Menezes and Latifi. Six for the race lead. Brilliant stuff. Downhill, through Speaker's Corner, heading towards Pouin. Now, is Verstappen going to get away? Lower down, incidentally, Tom Blomquist is running in 15th place, having started only 18th. He's done the best of anybody in Sector 1. And Blomquist, as we have seen in earlier races this weekend, is another good overtaker around here. Jordan King turning his way through Pouin, and he's gone backwards. He was 24th at the end of the previous lap, so Jordan King's had a real nightmare somewhere, having started 15th. Hurst versus Goddard now. West Tech versus T-Sports. But up front, Verstappen, for the moment, is the man. Third at the start of the lap, he will lead, count the end of it, unless the others can gang up on him, coming down to the bus stop. And yesterday, when Verstappen hit the front, there was little that Ocon could do about him, and that will really start to worry the Frenchman now. Here they come. Ocon needs to stay on this part of the circuit, up with Verstappen, to use the toe to challenge going up to Lecom. For third, round the outside goes Serralis for fourth and fifth and sixth. Menezes tries to challenge Brian Meisner. Latifi was up alongside him. And then in seventh place, Guimaraes tries to join this party as well. The leaders go through. They now are getting away. Verstappen and Ocon by over a second from Serralis, who is third. Brian Meisner fourth. And it's Menezes, Latifi and Guimaraes. That battle pack for third, turning out of La Source. There's another good scrap behind. Rosenqvist is eighth, Jake Dennis is up to ninth. Now Tatiana Caldron in tenth and with a bit of damage. Look, Caldron's left front wing end plate dropping on the ground. Lucas Auer, I'm afraid, has dropped to the very back. He's had a drama somewhere and Caldron struggling. Look, going through Eau Rouge, another place lost. And with that damage, it's going to be easy pickings, I'm afraid. Ocon to the outside, wheel to wheel with Verstappen. They touch. Verstappen hangs on to the advantage, though. We've seen this season just how brave a driver Verstappen is, and he really uses all of that bravery around here to excel. 
Verstappen versus Ocon is a fascinating fight. They are still nose to tail as they come down towards Bruxelles. Now, if they carry on like this, Felix Sorales, who, boy, is overdue some good fortune, could yet catch back up to them. He is third. Brian Meisner is fourth. In fifth is Menezes. Latifi is sixth. And the guys on the pit wall, I don't think, have taken a breath yet because it's been a bit heart in mouth all of this. A replay of the start. So, watch Verstappen up near the pit wall. Now he makes his move against Sorales from fifth on the grid. He breaks as late as he can for La Source from another angle. Look on the inside. Bingo, he takes third, turning into the first corner from fifth. Another rocket ship start. Vandalar getting involved with Toril. And this was lap one, heading into Le Combe round the outside. John Bright Meisner, brave staff to take the lead. Around that lap, Rosenqvist versus Guimaraes. You see how dusty it is on the outside of the circuit there. Ocon was the second race leader. And then the third was Verstappen. And have a look at this. Third coming up the Kemmel straight on the outside of Brian Meisner, but just look how late Verstappen is prepared to break, and he swoops around the outside of Esteban Ocon. So Esteban Ocon, having lost that race lead, Max Verstappen taking it, another look. Sorales just couldn't find any gap at all, could he? The testicularly enhanced Max Verstappen round the outside, puts himself into the lead of the race, we're getting a driving standards flag for Esteban Ocon for a dangerous manoeuvre. And we are also having a mechanical warning, a meatball flag for Tatiana Calderon. A technical problem, and that will be that damage to the wing. Interesting, though, that Ocon gets a driving standards flag for the move. Right, we have now done three laps. Verstappen leads Ocon by three tenths of a second, as Calderon has just come into the pit lane to sort out that damaged wing. Disappointing after yesterday's good run. Time for a deep breath as the cars climb uphill. Latifi now there, attacks Guimaraes. They're side by side. Ocon again challenging Verstappen. He's on the outside. He's going to do it this time, and he moves right across on Verstappen. Through he goes. But Verstappen fights back. Round the outside. He's done it. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely stunning. Verstappen loses the lead, and straight away he's on his toes, and he takes it back. This has been the best advert for Formula 3 you could have wished for this weekend. We have had three stunning races, and this perhaps is the best yet, with two of the best guys in the championship going toe-to-toe -to -toe on one of the fastest and most demanding circuits on the calendar. Downhill goes Verstappen, back in the lead. Ocon in second place. And this is only lap four out of 16. There is still a long way to go. Much can yet happen. Felix Sorales trying to close on those ahead. His last lap, though, not as quick. So even though the two ahead are squabbling, he's not yet taking advantage of that. Sandro Zella, you caught a glimpse of. And now Ocon, look, has fallen away quite a bit from Verstappen. Now, has he become dispirited or has he had a little drama somewhere and lost ground? Or has he now realised that Verstappen has got a quicker car? Ocon, all of a sudden, looks as though not the fight has gone out of him necessarily, but certainly he's too far back really to do anything about Verstappen because next time around, by the time that toe has worked and he's gone up with Verstappen, it'll be too late to challenge and it'll be time for the corner, unless he can really work some magic on the next couple of corners. Brian Meisner under attack once again. Latifi comes up to challenge in the background. Rosenqvist goes round the outside of Guimaraes. They touch, damage to Rosenqvist's car. Jake Dennis goes round the outside and picks up a place. And so the order changes yet again. Menezes goes up to fourth now. Brian Meisner down to fifth, and it's Latifi Guimaraes. Dennis goes eighth. Ninth is Rosenqvist. Blomqvist is tenth, and he's just done the fastest lap of the race as Tom Blomqvist. It goes ninth at La Source. The yellow car is that of Blomqvist. He's got ahead of the other Quist, Rosenqvist, who in turn has now got Shipkoviak breathing down his neck. Almost every corner produces something in this race. The cars come then. Up Radion, onto the Kemmel straight, and this is the run to Lecom. Jake Dennis is lining up to try to make a move against Guimaraes. Ocon has closed a bit onto Verstappen, but not enough. And how about this? Brian Meisner looks at Latifi. Dennis and Guimaraes are together. Blomqvist and Rosenqvist together. Off the road goes Rosenqvist. Threads his way between the curbs, and he will rejoin. But with the damage on the wing, really, I'm afraid, he is rather irrelevant to this battle now. As they come through Brussels. Jake Dennis in the Racing Stets Foundation colours has got Tom Blomqvist, his Carlin teammate behind him, and then Shipkoviak. Blomqvist having set the fastest lap of the race last time around, proving that he's a man in a hurry. And he's in the points, don't forget, as well, having started 18th. How is Foco getting on? He is 19th, having started 24th. And Lucas Au, we don't know what happened to him, but he fell to the very back. He is now up into 23rd. But 
it's going to be a really difficult race this for him. He needs a safety car, I think, to bring him back into the game. The previous two races of the weekend have both had a safety car situation, both because of accidents through Le Con. Cars tangling and hitting the tyre barrier. There is Verstappen, the race leader. In sector one, he was being caught by Ocon in the toe. In sector two, he pulled away by half a second. Exactly the pattern that we saw lap after lap after lap yesterday. He's done the best of anybody in the middle sector now has Max Verstappen. And Ocon, you get the feeling around here, is having a bit of a wake-up call, discovering just how good and how consistent Verstappen can be. This is a replay of a lap ago. Watch Guimaraes versus Rosenqvist. They touch. Damage to the wing of Rosenqvist's car. Jake Dennis right round the outside. Very good opportunistic move, that. And Gustavo Menezes, as you see, a lock-up from Lucas Auer. That, I think, was what did for him early on in the race, going off at the bus stop. Gustavo Menezes is being given a driving standards flag for more than one change of direction in defence. Jake Dennis gets ahead of Guimaraes there, going into La Source. That's for seventh place. So Gustavo Menezes running fourth, being given this warning flag for more than one change of direction in blocking, and that would be Nicholas Latifi. Right, seventh. Guimaraes versus Dennis. It trades every corner, seemingly. And now Jake Dennis is in the toe. He's got Blomqvist behind him. Can Tom Blomqvist buy into that as well as the leaders come towards us? Verstappen has now done the fastest lap. A 2.11.4, not as good as his 2.11.1 of yesterday for a lap record. Guimaraes on the inside, defends from Dennis. Blomqvist tries to get up the inside, can't do it. Tom's brother Paul racing in 1600cc Formula Renault. He was here a few weeks ago. Of course, the two of them sons of Stig Blomqvist, the former World Rally champion, and Tom pursuing a single-seater circuit racing career and continually proving to be one of the top Carlin drivers. Here, though, he's got a battle on his hands to get past Jake Dennis. Now, this is what Dennis did at La Source. Breaks very late up the inside of Guimaraes, goes wide. The Brazilian nips back up the inside. You could see it coming, couldn't you? Dennis goes through, leaves the door wide open. Come through, Felipe. Guimaraes goes ahead and Jake Dennis lives to fight another day. Off has gone Antonio Giovinazzi. Skips over the kerb, over the grass, back onto the circuit. And Giovinazzi down in 14th place. Jordan King ahead of him, so he falls now in that replay to 15th. Lap six we are on here at Spa. And Max Verstappen is the race leader. Kaylee Beretta is now being warned about track limits. Beretta started the race well, but has really slapped down to 20th place having started eighth, so things are changing all the time here. But up front, Verstappen continues to underline just how good he is around this circuit. He's only had a couple of days in the wet prior to this weekend. It's his first year of car racing, don't forget, as now once more Jake Dennis attacks Felipe Guimaraes almost sideways as he comes into the first part of the bus stop. But Jake Dennis continues to fight on in seventh and eighth places, these two. Under braking for La Source, Esteban Ocon closing up onto the back of Verstappen. It's also, of course, not just the battle between those two, as Dennis this time makes it work on the inside, and that's also Guimaraes goes way wide all over the runoff. But that lead battle is two different teams, Prema versus Van Amersport, and also it is Mercedes versus Volkswagen. Heading downhill, Guimaraes loses out. Past him goes Blomqvist now. Blomqvist had already been passed by Shimkoviak. Here are the leaders. Ocon this time might just be close enough and look for third place. Serratis and Menezes together. Ocon to the inside. Doesn't work. Menezes for the outside, and he's done it. He goes third. Gustavo Menezes has really looked good around Spa, better than we've seen all season, and he's underlining the point once again. Shimkoviak, then Blomqvist, then Guimaraes. They turn their way through Le Camp. There is Rosenqvist on the back now of Roy Nissani. Roy Nissani has gained 11th place last time around. Ocon did the fastest lap of the race, proving that he's not given up yet. He may have had a lap, perhaps, to just let his tyres take a breather, but he's pushing once again, trying to inch up onto the back of Max Verstappen's Van Amersfoort racing car. Still, Volkswagen leading Mercedes, and as I say, nobody this season has had three wins in a weekend. Verstappen could put himself in the history books here. Very wide indeed goes Rosenqvist, still struggling with that damage to the wing. You see how useful that runoff tarmac is. A few years ago, when that was grass and gravel, he'd be history by now. A look here at Antonio Fuoco getting himself up past Santino Ferrucci. That is a change for 18th place. And Fuoco really should be in the points and pitching for wins, not way, way down the order. So Ocon then, four tenths quicker on the last lap than Verstappen. Still trying to hunt him down, still trying to get in the mix. Guimaraes now being given a driving standards flag for a dangerous manoeuvre. 
The race director is far busier in this race giving people warnings than we've seen over the course of the previous two. There is the leader. As he comes past the grandstand on his left, there is a big banner that says overtaking is an art. And Max Verstappen has proved that over the course of this weekend. He leads Ocon by half a second. A replay here of a spin for Sandro Zella, getting it wrong down at Le Col. He goes off backwards into the gravel. And I fear that is the end of the Swiss driver. Shipkoviak versus Blomqvist, together as they work their way into La Source. Shipkoviak stays ahead, and look at this move up the inside. Jordan King gains a place under braking, goes ahead of Giovinazzi. That is for 14th. This battle is for 8th, and it's Shipkoviak ahead of Blomqvist as they plunge downhill. Lap 8 we're on now. Blomqvist should be able to make a move. Sorales eyeing up Menezes. Ocon has a look for the race lead, but not as committed as Verstappen is for that. Sorales back ahead on the outside. Third place changes again. Then Jake Dennis ahead of John Bryant Meisner. Now that has just changed for sixth. Blomqvist goes ahead of Shipkoviak, so that puts him up into eighth. And Guimaraes is tenth, fending off Roy Nisani. So the orange car there, Roy Nisani, the Israeli for Booker Motorsport, is the first man outside the points, and he very much wants to get into the points if he can possibly do so. He's best of the year, ninth at Poe. But he could break into the points for the second time this year as he heads downhill now. This battle for eighth place continues. There is a yellow flag in sector two. That, I suspect, is for Zeller's car, which is still stuck in the gravel on the outside of Lecol. Out of the pith path come the race leaders. In sector one, again, Ocon, thanks to a toe, was the quicker. But this part of the circuit, this middle sector, you don't really get a toe at all. And so, as they go past the incident zone, you see Verstappen starting to extend the advantage once again. Exactly what we saw in the race yesterday. And fair play to Verstappen, having lost the lead to Ocon, he was not taking it lying down. If he can pull this kind of performance for the remaining races in the championship season, Ocon is, come season's end, going to have to work quite a bit harder because each race out now, Verstappen wants to try and nibble into that advantage in the championship that Ocon has. And this weekend, I think, will be a real wake-up call for Esteban Ocon. If he goes away winless, then that will be a real shock to the system. This is the fight for third. Sorales versus Menezes as they work their way up over the timing line. Further back here, you can see Giovinazzi versus King. They're on the back of Hector Hurst as they come into the bus stop. Giovinazzi goes back ahead then as they work their way through the bus stop over the timing line to do eight laps now. So far this year, Esteban Ocon has had at least one win at every venue. Spa looks like it is going to be a very different story. As there, Spike Goddard dives into Lasors on the tail of Sean Delisle, and he's going to make a move as he coming past the endurance pits, past the old start and finish area. This is the fight for 16th, and Spike Goddard goes through the NBE engine Delara, the Neil Brown engineering unit, goes ahead of the VW powered car of Sean Delisle. The Indonesian driver drops back one spot. Menezes back ahead of Sorales. The change has changed and changed and changed again for third. And this absolutely wheel to wheel ship. Koviak on the inside. Gimaraj round the outside. Back up into ninth place he goes. Out of Lecom, down to Brussels. Let's have a replay. This, as in the foreground, Ocon was just closing on Verstappen, was Menezes jumping ahead once more of Felix Sorales. And this is the part of the circuit where the bulk of the overtaking has been done. Not exclusively, but the bulk of the overtaking. So Verstappen to Ocon now, 0.796 of a second. Sorales and Menezes still not lapping quite as quickly as those ahead. And the Americans, admittedly Sorales from Puerto Rico, but we'll call them Americans for the purposes of this. Very good mates as well, so they'll be enjoying this battle. Now, we've got a drive-through penalty for, first of all, 25, Antonio Fuoco, and also number nine, Mitch Gilbert. I'm afraid it doesn't really affect the overall standings much because Gilbert is down in 23rd, Fuoco is 18th, but drive-through penalties for both Fuoco and Gilbert. We're not being told why, whether it's track limits or driving standards in terms of being overly defensive, pass. But drive-throughs are being given to both Fuoco and Gilbert. And that really puts the tin hat on what's been a pretty torrid weekend for the Italians, certainly. So Sorales and Menezes continuing their battle. Gimaraes and Shimkoviak continuing theirs. Shimkoviak round the outside into the bus stop. Gimaraes breaks late, far too deep into the corner. Shimkoviak has to make his own arrangements and Hurst and Giovinazzi get together. And that, I'm afraid, is the end of Hector Hurst's race. Broken suspension, he's off at the bus stop.
That car should be able to be moved out of the way swiftly from Barrow with a form. Hopefully no need for a safety car. The leaders work lap ten and a big spin. It's Guimaraes at Lazor's. He's lost it under braking. The Brazilian spins. Yellow flags wave. And even if he can rejoin, he's going to tumble down the order. Guimaraes having a pretty torrid race now as the leaders howl their way up to Le Com. Engine screaming. Yellow flags then in the first sector of the lap here. Again in the first sector, Ocon brought down the gap. Brian Meisner having a look at Blomqvist now to try and retake that place. Blomqvist up to seventh. Rosenqvist versus Nissani now. Rosenqvist was 12th, Nissani was 10th, and that has changed because they were able to take advantage, or at least Rosenqvist took advantage of the Guimaraes spin down at La Source. If you're all following this still, the one constant is that Verstappen leads the way. Ocon second and Menezes could be good for the podium yet again as they're trudging away is Guimaraes and that is how he came to spin because he got a pretty big whack from behind by Rosenqvist. That may result in a bit of discussion post-race. Rosenqvist, yeah, just thumps into the back of it. You can see it dislodges the rear wing. So Guimaraes when you look at it on those two replays, the innocent victim in all of that. And it may well be that Rosenqvist ends up with a case to answer. And the safety car is being deployed. So that must be to try and get that car of Guimaraes out of the way. Now, will this help Ocon? Safety car deployed. They race to the boards. And the cars will work their way in a moment up through the bus stop. The safety car will collect them at the end of lap 10. So it's going to be a very short, sharp restart. What have we got on the clock? Just under 13 minutes. Will it be laps? Will it be time? Let's see. There is Hector Hurst's car. And that is also needing to be retrieved. And that, I think, is actually proving to be a little bit tougher than the officials wanted it to be. With that broken suspension, it perhaps does need the race to be neutralised so that can be hauled out of the way. There are lots of access gates around Spa, as you need to have for a modern-day Formula 1 circuit. But I think it may take a bit long to get a snatch vehicle to it and therefore it's better to neutralise the race, get that car out of the way, deal with the Guimaraes car as well from La Source, get the circuit clear and then we can go racing again. Wow, yet again, what a race you can say. Max Verstappen is the leader, Esteban Ocon is with him and third under the safety car here at Spa, Gustavo Menezes. Then Felix Sorales ahead of Nicholas Latifi and Jake Dennis. This was Hurst versus Giovinazzi. Hurst, I think, ran a bit deep into the corner, didn't he, to an extent, and Giovinazzi was there. They were always going to bang wheels at that point, and so Hector Hurst, disappointingly, is out. Carrying on down the order behind Jake Dennis, then Blomqvist is now seventh, John Bryant Meisner is eighth, Jules Shimkoviak ninth, Felix Rosenqvist is tenth, Roy Nissani eleventh, Jordan King twelfth, thirteenth is Giovinazzi, fourteenth is Galil, fifteenth is Goddard, sixteenth is Ferrucci, seventeenth is Torrell, up to eighteenth is Lucas Auer, and I said many laps ago he needed a safety car. It's come a bit late, but he could gain ground on the restart. 19th is Michele Beretta. 20th, Dennis van der Laar. 21st is Foco. 22nd is Gilbert. And 23rd, and now in the pits, in fact, having retired there, is Guimaraes. And Hector Hurst bites his nails in anticipation of what he's going to have to tell the team. So the Alfa Romeo 4C once more makes an appearance as the safety car. And Max Verstappen has had quite a long look at the back of that over the course of the weekend because we've had the safety car used in both of the previous two races. Everybody weaving around look to maintain the warmth of the Hankook tyres. This is lap number 11. Just looking to see whether Mitch Gilbert has yet taken his drive-through penalty for... He has. It's still on the screen saying that he has a drive-through, but he has been through and done it, so Mitch Gilbert is good to go to the end now. He doesn't have to worry about that, although the information is still on the timing screen. Somewhat Damocletian-like for him. So hopefully the team will be able to confirm with the race director that the penalty has been taken. And that should mean that the message will go, unless he's got another one. So there is Hector Hurst's car. The flatbed has arrived. It's not too difficult a job to put it onto the back and get the car off the circuit, but easier to do it for all concerned with the field at a slower pace in one compact bunch. And the fans looking on in anticipation of the restart. Verstappen, Ocon, Menezes, Sorales, Latifi, Dennis, Blomqvist, Brant Meisner, Shimkoviak, Rosenqvist, the top ten. And on the restart, who knows what's going to happen. 
can all shuffle yet again. The cars currently are on lap 11 out of 16. We've got just under 10 minutes to go. So, again, it's going to be tight on time, this, depending on how many more, more laps the safety car's got to do. It will be at least one more. It comes to the incident zone. There's the driver involved. Hector Hurst gets himself into the cab of the flatbed. He will go back with the car to the team. And we should be able to go racing at the end of the next lap, because as soon as the recovery vehicle there sets off, it can bear right straight into the pit lane and then the track is clear so this should be the last safety car lap coming up 11 laps done at Spa Francochamps round 15 of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship Van Amersfoort leads Prema Power Team leads Van Amersfoort leads Team West Tech Prema Power Team and Carlin that is the way they run at the moment and we should go back to racing next time around. Giovinazzi and Hurst under investigation for the incident at the bus stop, but I think it was one of those racing incidents, and Giovinazzi got away pretty lightly, didn't he, in 13th place. Pace quickening of the safety car now, again suggesting that it will be in at the end of this lap. We await confirmation, but everything is pointing that way, and if Max Verstappen does what he did in the previous two races, expect him to back right off as they come towards Blanchimont, crawl down to the bus stop, get everybody stacked up behind him, and then just as you expect the cars to have to break for the bus stop, he starts to quicken his pace, zips out of that chicane, accelerates over the line, and Ocon has got to be on his toes to go with him. This is going to be the pace to watch, I think, on the next lap, because with everybody up in one long line on the restart, there should be an awful lot of shuffling once again, heading up towards Les Combes. When the championship came here in 2012, Felix Zoralis and Carlos Sainz Jr. were the winners. The series didn't come to Spa last year, but it has made a very, very good return this year with now just eight minutes to go and five laps remaining. I think it's going to be against the clock again, isn't it? The safety car period affecting the race just enough to make it a number of minutes, not a number of laps, and that may go against one or two drivers who will run out of time in order to make another position change. We shall see down towards Pouin. Now you can see the pace has slowed down once more as Verstappen is stacking up the drivers behind him. The Dutch fans have quite a lot to cheer about so far. There could be more at the end of this race. The fastest lap still held by Esteban Ocon. Don't rule him out yet if he can make a good restart, if he can be really aggressive and really brave going up the Camel Strait out of Radion up towards Le Com. He's got a chance, he's got a chance. Dennis van der Laar turning his way out of the Piff Path. Teammate Antonio Fuoco behind him. The lights out on top of the safety car. And so as they come out of Le Col, the Stappen now backs right off, stacks the ball up behind him. And as the safety car zips away, now it's the Stappen who will control the pace. Pace being a relative term at this juncture because it is a real crawl. He's weaving around, he's keeping the warmth in the tyres. And of course, what he's also trying to do is outfox Esteban Ocon. And just as Esteban thinks, OK, I'll lift, that's when Verstappen wants to try and accelerate away. Ocon, in fairness, certainly in race two, uh, has been good on restarts. So let's see what he can do. He was a retirement early in race one, but in race two, it was on the restart that he did have a go at Verstappen on the climb up to Le Com. Just looking down into the pit lane where the T-Sport team have just been given a clipboard from an official, which might mean that there is... Uh, more news to come about penalties, we shall wait and see. Now, the Schappen accelerates away, Ocon has got to stay with him through the bus stop and through La Source and through Rouge to challenge going up to Le Con. Can he do it? He's already about two lengths back. Let's see what that translates to out of the bus stop again. Verstappen has good drive out of the corner. Look at Sorales already on his toes to get past his mate Menezes. He looks to the outside line as they head into La Source. Ocon six tenths back, Sorales tries the outside line. Wheel to wheel through the corner, but Menezes stays ahead of him. One car runs wide, coming out of the hairpin. Downhill come the race leaders, and look, Verstappen has done it already. He's managed to pull the gap over the first corner. That should be enough now to fend off Ocon all the way uphill. And really looking quick now is Latifi. He's on the back of Sorale, so he's up alongside Menezes. Third place could change here, coming up towards Le Com in the background. Bright Meisner has a go at Blomquist. Latifi challenging Menezes. Ocon looks, but he's not close enough to Verstappen. Sorales goes third, Menezes down to fourth, Latifi fifth, and it's Blomquist up ahead of Jake Dennis as they wriggle their way through Le Com on this, the 13th lap of the race, and we've got under five minutes to go now. 
heading downhill once more. It looks as though Verstappen is home and dry because Ocon just hasn't got enough pace seemingly to get close enough in order to challenge in that one key zone heading up the hill where you can get a tow. Downhill towards Paul. Battles rage on in midfield. You can see there in the background Rosenfist eyeing up Jules Shipkoviak and he gets forced up onto the kerb as they swoop through that long, fast left-hander. Rosenfist comes out of the corner, up on the inside, that's the outside for part one of the pit path. He's on the inside for part two, and he's on the outside line, the dustier line as we saw earlier on in the race. So Rosenfist, who has a bit of wing damage anyway from early on, has to give way. Four minutes of change remain here in race three at Spa, the 15th round of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship, an absolute corker it has been from Nicole up towards the poor Paul Frere. They'll come in a moment. Ferrucci running a bit wider, kicking up the dust. A replay here of Rosenqvist, who had a look on the inside, swooping through Pouon. And Spike Goddard is that running wide, coming through the corner. Not the only one to explore the white line. Ocon under breaking for the bus stop, closing a little bit. Serralis, Menezes, and then Latifi, third, fourth, fifth. Rosenqvist ahead of Roy Nisani. And then behind them, Jordan King, who back up into 12th place has come down. Brian Meiser has just lost a place at the bus stop. Chip Kovyak goes eighth. Leaders over the line. Six tenths is the margin. Two more laps to go. This and one more would be the prediction looking at the clock. Into La Source goes Chip Kovyak. He's on the inside of John Bryant Meisner. That's for eighth place. And Chip Kovyak, the Dutchman, stays ahead. Chip Kovyak certainly is a man that's really come on in the last few races, both not just here but Hungara Ring as well. Great shot of the cars flashing down and then up the other side of Eau Rouge. Now, Shimkoviak versus Brian Meisner versus Rosenqvist here. Eighth, ninth, tenth as they make the run. Ocon close enough to Verstappen, he has a look. Verstappen thinks about defending. Menezes has a look at Serralis. It's strange though, the way that Ocon looks but never seems to really buy into that move. Shimkoviak is ahead just of Rosenqvist. Then Nisani and King all go ahead of Brian Meisner going through Lincoln. John Brian Meisner tumbles down the order. Remember, he started second. And he's still under threat because now Giovinazzi and Gamal buy into it as well. And has John Brian Meisner got a problem? There's no retaliation. He pulls to one side. That looks as though there's something mechanical, sad to say, that has gone wrong. The Swede for Fortec with the Mercedes engine has got a problem. Max Verstappen does not have a problem, it seems, other than this constant shadow of Esteban Ocon behind him, who is staying with him on this lap, isn't he? He's not dropping away too much as they work their way through the pit path. It is hard to stay right up behind a Formula 3 car when you're running in the dirty air. You can do it on that straight in the slipstream because you're being dragged along and benefiting a little bit, and then you can make the move. But otherwise, the closer you get, then the harder it becomes to drive. And so, as the lap unwinds, Ocon just falls away slightly. Third and fourth, Serralis ahead of Menezes. Can Gustavo get a second podium finish out of the weekend here? turn their way up through Blanchimont. What about Ocon? Is he going to be close enough to make a move next lap through? Menezes once more finds the wide car of Serralis ahead of him. And with all due deference to the way Gustavo Menezes has driven this weekend, it really would be great to see Serralis on the podium after all he's been through this weekend and indeed this season. The next battle, Roy Nisani versus Jordan King, and this is for 11th. He's out of the points, but they're trying just as hard as anybody. The leaders go through onto the last lap, less than the lap time. He's left in the race at Spa now. It is still Verstappen ahead of Ocon by six tenths of the timing line. Behind Jordan King there is Giovinazzi, Carl in cars, but different liveries. So, we're about to break into the last minute of the race as the cars plunge downhill towards Eau Rouge. What we really need to see, though, is whether Ocon is close enough coming up the other side, heading up Radion through the Camel Strait to challenge into Le Corbe. I fear he will not be able to, but we'll see. A nose to tail for the lead. For third, Serrat is keeping Menezes at bay. Look at fifth, they're side by side as well as now. Blomqvist challenges Natifi. Menezes back through on the inside. He takes third, going into Le Corbe. Great stuff. Blomqvist up the inside of Natifi. That door is closed, but up front. Again, Ocon had a look, but pulled back in. And I think that was his last shot. Verstappen looks as though he's going to do three out of three this weekend. Verstappen has made no mistakes this weekend, and unless he makes one now, it looks as though win number three of the weekend and win number four of the season is going to go his way. Ocon's five wins are impressive, but for Verstappen to have three in a weekend, and seemingly that's what's going to happen, that is unprecedented this year. He turns now through the piff path, Ocon, there or thereabouts, but he just is not close enough 
and he's one real opportunity that everybody else, really apart from Ocon, has been able to exploit over these two races. But we've had Ocon being a regular front runner in because he crashed out of race one. That run up towards Nikon, he just can't take advantage of for whatever reason. Past the car track on the right, into Blanchimont, then to the bus stop. Max Verstappen is going to raise the roof, I suspect, for the Dutch fans because this will be win number three out of three races at Spa. For fifth place, Latifi and Blomqvist aren't done yet. Ocon is closing up under braking. He has a cheeky look at the inside, trying to rattle Verstappen at the last corner. Can he get the drive out of the corner? He's close, not close enough. What about, what about Blomqvist against Latifi? That doesn't change. Max Verstappen takes three wins at Spa. A brilliant weekend. Ferrucci runs out of road, coming into the bus stop. Off the road as well as Gondisani. That's all going to sort itself out as they scrabble to the line. Alex Toriel tries to gain out of all of that as well. And that is Dennis van der Laar, who is in strife at the bus stop. Wow, Max Verstappen's perfect weekend. Three races, three wins, and a lap record as well. Absolutely fantastic. And the way that he drove in that, because he didn't just dominate from the front, he had to really fight for that race lead. He lost it, he fought back, he lost it, he fought back. Brilliant stuff. And remember, he was fifth on the grid. So he had to make a good start, he had to work his way up the pack. Fantastic. Max Verstappen marks himself out as really this weekend having come of age, if you like. He's uh, in his first season of car racing. It's easy to forget that, given the alacrity with which he drives. But out of karting, he's done a fair bit of car testing over the winter, but straight into Formula 3. And he drives like somebody who is uh, a far more experienced driver. He's had some bad luck, he's had some accidents which have been of his own making but this weekend absolutely stunning display that's Dennis van der Laar in replay having his spin at the bus stop right at the very end getting back into the race and for Fritz van Amersfoort he's had not only three wins out of Max Verstappen but also a second third place for Menezes and Shimkoviak eighth in that race to go with a ninth in race one. I think that Van Amersfoort as a team and as a man will be pretty happy with what has gone on this weekend. The results as they cross the line. Verstappen, Ocon, Menezes, the top three. Sorales fourth ahead of Latifi, Blomqvist, Dennis, Shimkoviak, Rosenqvist and King. They round out the top ten. They round out those that score points. Antonio Giovinazzi takes 11th, Roy Nisani is 12th ahead of Lucas Auer, good recovery in the end, ahead of Galal, Toril, Ferrucci, Fuoco, Calderon with the damaged wing early on, 18th, then Mitch Gilbert after his drive through and Michele Beretta with Van der Laar, 21st, Spike Goddard dumped down to 22nd, and John Bright Meisner with real dramas, classified 23rd. Wow, three races at Spa this weekend, they have all delivered action, and this, race three, was no exception. all the way in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship at spa Francorchamps. Esteban Ocon will leave Belgium as the championship leader heading to the Norris ring. Tom Blomqvist then is second, Max Verstappen third and closing up all the time. This has been a very significant weekend for Verstappen. He came here fifth, he leaves third and he has taken those wins. He's taken points out of Ocon, looking very promising indeed. Lower down the order, Felix Sorales again, sad to say, misses out on a podium, but he runs 11th in the championship and Menezes, good weekend, brings him into the mix 12th now. Remember, 33 races in this championship, that was the 15th, so there is, to coin a phrase, a long way to go, but a lot can yet happen. And we hear post-race, Roy Nisani is under investigation. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of round 15. 
Esteban Ocon made that good start to lead to La Source, attacked by John Bryant Meisner, who ultimately would retire. But Verstappen was third by turn one. And it kept on coming. Bright Meisner, though, attacked for the race lead. He got level with Ocon, diving up to Lecom. He went round the outside. Ocon under attack from Verstappen. Serrat is running fourth ahead of Menezes. There was a good early race battle as well between Felipe Guimaraes and Felix Rosenqvist, who went round the outside, found himself on the really dusty part of the circuit and had to back out of it. He instantly came under attack as Ocon got the race lead away from Bright Meisner. Verstappen got up the inside and took the place. Ocon did his level best to fight back. As Guimaraes was busy battling with Nicholas Latifi, swinging through La Source. Latifi battled with Brian Meisner as they got to the bus stop at the end of the lap. Guimaraes made contact with Rosenqvist, did a bit of damage to the Swedes wing end plate, but the cars battled their way on. More drama. Lucas Auer outbraked himself coming into the bus stop, scrabbled over the escape road, back onto the circuit, but he fell a long way down the order. Jake Dennis pulled a very ambitious move up the inside of Guimaraes, ran wide, and so the Brazilian got back up the inside and retook the place. Sandro Zella had a spin down at L'Ecole, put it backwards off into the gravel bed. That was the end of the Swiss driver. Spike Goddard was another to try to attack. He was busy battling with Sean Galile. He had a good run heading past the old pits, the endurance pits. He moved himself through as the cars plunged downhill towards Eau Rouge. Hector Hurst got involved with Antonio Giovinazzi. Broken suspension for the Brit's car. He was out and that ultimately would result in the safety car making its appearance for the third time this weekend. Different emotions from different teams up and down the... Arash was then hit by Rosenqvist. It broke the rear wing mounting. It turned him out of the race and a very frustrated Guillaume Arash, a retirement once again. When the safety car took to the track, it bunched everybody up. Hector Hurst's car was removed. And on the restart, Ocon had a look at Verstappen but couldn't do it. Menezes had a look and did succeed in getting past Sorales. At the chequered flag, Max Verstappen took win number three of the weekend. Nobody has done that this season, winning all three races. Verstappen really has looked so impressive this weekend. And the podium is ready to receive the drivers to a soundtrack of GT cars coming out onto the circuit. Max Verstappen stands on the top step of the podium. Four wins he's now had, three of which have been this weekend. We wait for the representative of Van Amersfoort. We also wait for the second and third place drivers to make their way out onto the podium. There is Esteban Ocon, who is not noted for smiling when not on the top step. And it's fair to say that his demeanour is somewhat different from that of Max Verstappen's. And there for third place is Gustavo Menezes once more. 1-3 for Van Amersfoort, a win for Max Verstappen. So for Max Verstappen, the national anthem is played. He is a happy man. So too is Fritz van Amersfoort, the team boss. And Max will receive his trophy from former racer Pierre Antibo, one of the stars of the European Touring Car Championship in the 1980s. Now the general manager of the Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps. And the trophy is given to Max Verstappen. The winning team, van Amersfoort, I should say, will be represented. It will be Christoph Stucki for Hankook who will hand over the trophy. And there for Esteban Ocon. Jaran Antibo steps forward once more to hand over the trophy to the second place driver and Gustavo Menezes for third in what has been his best weekend by far in the championship this year. 
it is again Christoph Stucki, Hankook's senior manager of motorsport, who hands over the trophy to the American driver. And as the top three now get together on the top step for photographs, the team rep there as well. It has been certainly a fantastic weekend, no argument about that, of Formula 3 racing here at Spa. The best advert the championship could have with great racing, fabulous action in all three races, not just in one, in all three races, and the story of the championship will move to Germany next weekend. Great racing we've had at Spa. We look forward to more of the same at the Norris Ring. From David Addison for now, bye-bye.